So the concept of prosthesis patient mismatch was first described back in 1978 by Ramatula, and it describes the concept that a prosthesis may be too small for a patient's cardiac output needs. And the surgical literature, which is now many decades of research, has demonstrated that if you have severe prosthesis patient mismatch, or PPM, you are at higher risk of mortality, heart failure, hospitalization, there's less LV mass regression after aortic valve replacement, worse quality of life, functional imp improvement, and even structural valve deterioration is more frequent. So we think severe PPM is not a good thing after surgery. Taver valves, we think, and in most studies have been shown, to have larger valve orifice areas than the surgical valves because they don't have a sewing ring. So the question has arisen, is PPM a problem after TAVR or not? And the data in small studies to date have had mixed results. So our data was a retrospective analysis of the US STS ACC transcatheter valve therapy registry. This is a registry that collects data on all US commercial TAVR procedures. And we went back and looked from 2014 through the first quarter of 2017 collecting over 60,000 patients who had TAVR, commercial TAVRs in the U.S. in a relatively contemporary time frame. And then among those 60,000 patients, we were able to link close to 40,000 of them to their Medicare claims database uh, based on if they were over 65 and had Medicare uh, coverage insurance. And with that, we could find out whether they died, whether they had been rehospitalized, and look at one-year outcomes. So what we found, first of all, is that both severe and moderate PPM using fairly standardized definitions uh, in the literature are common, occurring in about 12% and about 25% respectively of patients after TAVR in this contemporary time frame. So the concept that it doesn't happen is not true. It's there and severe PPM does occur. We were then able to look at the predictors of it and found in multivariate analysis a number of clinical and procedural factors that were linked to the presence of severe PPM. And then we looked at the outcomes. And in one year of follow-up, which is a relatively short time frame, the hazard ratio for death was 1.19 if you had severe PPM. So a 19% increase in the risk of dying in one year that if you did not have severe PPM. And <clears throat> the risk of having a heart failure rehospitalization was increased about 13%. And we found no uh, correlation or association with either stroke or quality of life. So the TVT registry, which is, uh, was administered by both STS and the ACC organizations, was originally set up with funding from industry, and they're an important partner along with the FDA in the registry. But the charter for the registry prohibited manufacturer-to-manufacturer -manufacturer comparisons. So we did find, for instance, though, that patients who were receiving TAVR for valve and valve procedures in surgical valves, patients who received smaller prostheses, less than or equal to 23 millimeters in diameter, both of those factors had a 2.8 fold increased odds ratio of developing severe PPM. And then there were some other patient characteristics like female gender, being African American, uh, being younger age, lower ejection fraction, things like that. So we have baseline characteristics and also procedural characteristics that were associated with the presence of severe PPM. So I think the first, the goal would be to identify and limit the frequency of this problem that is associated with an increased mortality. And the first step in that is awareness. So I think uh, physicians, just like we calculate STS scores and we calculate uh, the annular diameter of the, of, the, of the patient's annulus to decide what prosthesis to put in, we should start thinking about whether this patient is at risk for severe PPM. And if you can identify patients that are at, severe, at risk of severe PPM, then you, one could think about some options to try to avoid it. And those include maybe a, a prosthesis that has a better effective orifice area. There's some evidence that in some of the smaller sizes, the self-expanding valves have a larger effective orifice area than the balloon expandable valves. Maybe in some patients, a larger valve of one manufacturer could be fit in, whereas a smaller valve would be recommended by a different manufacturer for that same annulus based on either area or perimeter. Uh, when doing valve and valve procedures, there are ways to fracture the valve in order to allow a larger prosthesis. And then finally, I think as we move into lower risk patients and younger patients, 
uh, we're going to have to think about even surgery as an option for some of these patients. If you're young and you have a risk of severe PPM and you can get a surgical valve with, say, a root enlargement procedure that allows a larger prosthesis than a TAVR valve, that's something that will have to be factored into the discussion at the heart team meeting.